morning everybody thanks for tuning in to concrete with the hoss this is our project for today we're gonna run a sidewalk right around here connecting to that door all the way around they put an addition over here and we're gonna do like a curvy meandering sidewalk over to a new porch that we are gonna put right in this corner for their new front door let me put this down so from corner out just past this window approximately nine feet all the way over just shy of this downspout probably right to the outside of this window i'd like to keep these out of the concrete when we can so we're going to do a porch here rolled slate broken stone face one or two more steps down to a walk stay with us now, as you can see, this is a block foundation. No termite block here for whatever reason. They're going to put stone uh, out here on this ledge, no brick. Uh, so they probably should have used termite block here and waterproofed over it. Uh, so we have all these holes left. So I have this water membrane, waterproofing membrane, really sticky. I just lay it over that ledge and stick it to the block wall and make sure you have it where you want it because you only get like one shot at it. There it is all protected. Water comes down, hits that lip, and it can run right over. Okay, let's get some stone in here. Just getting the stone against the back wall. I'm going to drill and pin it into that top cord. This is 2B limestone. Uh, really does not require tamping, but since we're putting it in about 24 to 30 inches thick, we are gonna tamp it as soon as those guys get here. Now, we're not gonna over tamp it. I don't wanna risk pushing that wall in. So just a light tamping to lock it in. And that's why we're using this material so I don't have to really pound it against the house wall. Okay, my side panel is set. I need to notch around this, notch around that. I want wood to slide back here and close this gap in and then come all the way up here. I did a quick layout. This goes, this stays, or like that, this goes. I'll get that cut, let's see how it fits. Okay, as I was talking, I knew that didn't look right. <laughs> I need to cut this little bump out here. So I come down, notch this out. This all stays. And this goes. Okay, let's see how that works out. I wanted to leave the camera running. Pretty close. I'm just a little bit tight. I'll take a sliver off right here. And I think it's going to slide right in there. Notch right around that. Boy, that's so close. Okay. Took a little sliver off of that nub. Okay, let's see if it stays. Okay, I'm going to cut a little bit off right here just to close this quarter inch gap up, and we are good. All right, let's get this screwed together. This is my ledge. My step liner is going to set right here and give me a little cantilever look. Okay, there's my notch all done. Took me three tries. 
I could have deleted the first uh, first couple and said, hey, look at that, I got it. But that's not how we do it around here. So I'll go ahead and run some screws from the outside in so I can get them out. I think we're good on stone. One more coming right here. We'll face this off. Just called for concrete. Uh, one, two more kickers in here. Uh, so nothing pushes, just filling up that space on the bottom so nothing oozes out. Uh, Matt's running a couple tap cons into the block. Over here, we're, string we're stringing this face so it stays nice and straight. Steven's getting some more stone right now. We're going to build a gra uh, limestone ramp up here so we can get the power buggy up oh halfway and then and then dump the concrete over i want to get a little bit more stone in this corner that's a lot of concrete in there notice how we have concrete running down the face drilled in setting on that ledge setting on that ledge pulling the mixer into place we're going to power buggy it up i made a ramp right here Right up, rotate the bucket, keep the tracks nice and straight. Clamping our step liner in place. What are you adjusting the seam right in the front? Yeah, it seems like it's just going to be right there. And right there. Okay, let's get pouring. There's our rebar grid. Rod it in high and low. What else? I think that's it. This gets a rolled slate texture, border, and that's it. Easy, 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 easy. Buggy. Right up to it. And over. Splash guards in place. Consolidating that face. Make sure we're down around the rebar. Stuff laying everywhere. Whew, that's a lot of kickers. Coming out a little bit. Almost full. the top get that hole filled in over there you need bigger boots pour this top level about eight inches thick plus the frost walls or return walls then they'll landscape up on it probably down to about two buggies left I missed that angle on the last shot I think we're still really straight. We might be seeing a little curve in it. Never so slightly. How about this one? Man, that looks pretty good to me. Yeah, we need to. Okay. Completely empty. We scraped every rock out of them. We have six feet in there that need to come out. Tom's gaining a little bit. We have a little bit of concrete in that. Scrape him clean. 
Here, I'll get this in there. Good. All right, I think we're in good shape. That's some pretty good figuring, guessing concrete. Lucky. We don't like it that close. I think we're still short, guys. What now? I'll take it. Okay, Steve went up inside the cement truck, cleaned out the fins. We got about another five gallon bucket of concrete out. Right there. Buried. All right, good deal. Right on the money. Okay, didn't cheat anywhere. Let's get her bull floated. They're getting cleaned up. There wasn't room for me in the concrete, so I don't have to go squirt my boots off. While they're getting cleaned up, I'll uh, get it bull floated. No straight edging for me today. Nice and easy. I have a feeling we're going to be in full sun here in the next hour. Now a patio this size or porch this size, we're going to throw a cut right down the center. And that'll be a 7 foot by 9 foot pad. 8 inches thick. Should be good. Slow and flat. Heavy quarter cross slope coming this way. Good. Maybe pick it up a little bit. Make make it a make it a light quarter or quarter. We met the service door. Coming down, rolling, setting height across there. All the way up. Matt's cutting in our border. I was coming to help him and then got sidetracked. How's it going, Matt? How in the sun wet or tight and the other one's wet. We decided to go with a 16 inch border. We're going to have a 16 inch step on the face so that way they match. All right, 16 inch mark. And a little bit of stone. Form the step. We'll be pulling these sides shortly. It's taking a long time to dry. It's all in the shade. Right here, that front strip is ready. So I just have our liquid release clear and spray that outer edge and then I spray the wheel keep that wheel nice and wet no dry spots on it and just give it some texture real light over here in the shade I'm not even gonna do it I'm just showing you it's too wet it'll leave lines so we give that a roll, and then the last thing I do for this border is a heavy stone stamp. It's a more aggressive texture. Just lay it on. I'll get some better footage of this in a minute. Now it leaves real deep veining in. That's what it looks like. This this is pretty tight over here. If everything was as tight as that, I could get going on it. I just wanted to show you a little bit, and I'll show you more as we are able to get on the concrete. It's been about 20 minutes. Uh, just trying to push forward. The concrete's really moving. I'm gonna have to get on that soon. I wanted this border to be all done. Man, my fingernail's dirty. 
pick it up, give it a quarter turn, half turn, quarter turn, change that pattern up. Getting close. Just trout it all smooth. Putting a light coat on there and hitting the wheels. I'll go around the edges first. Matt's trying the wall smooth and then taking a just a plastic bag, touching up the wheel only gets so close. Now we'll get sort of the same texture all the way up to the wall. It's better than leaving it smooth. As soon as I hit this shade, I have to let off on the pressure. Lots of pressure. No pressure right there. Okay, there we go. Finally ready. Skeleton crew here. Everybody left us. We didn't need them here anyway. Okay, last little bit of wheeling. Yeah, nice. First one of the year. Show them the razzle dazzle. Razzle dazzle. Peel it away. There is your broken stone face. A couple holes in it. She'll buff out. Oh yeah, buffing her right out. Where's your gloves? Gloves are for babies. Gloves are for the weak. Yeah. I have two pair on. Yeah, no, I know. Oh, you need a pair? I have two pair on. Pretty cold here. Nice. Well, that's still really soft. A little bit more vibration, and these holes will be gone. As we got up to the top, I really backed off on the vibrator. I didn't want the form to push any more than it was. Let's take a look at that. Gonna pull the front face now? Yeah. Yeah, it really pushed, huh? As straight as an arrow. One of those things I wish I would have thought about it before we poured it and formed it and poured it. They're doing stone under here. They should do stone under here so it matches. I didn't hold this form back far enough, so while the concrete's still wet, talking with the homeowner, yes, they do want stone here. This is the stone they're using. So we just took our claw hammers. The concrete's pretty tight, but still scratchable. I just like posting everything. Even when we have little mishaps, everybody has them. Everybody. Yeah, I know. So now the stone will fit up underneath there rather than like that and look crummy. So it only took 15 minutes. Uh, we're getting ready to pull this face off. This was a little bit softer in the shade, so we're just giving it a minute. We'll do the same thing on this corner and that side. So something to consider. If you're doing this, remember the stone veneer. Here comes the sun. Our mixers do any minute. We're going to pull them right around those trucks, right through here. We'll nose them up this hill, right to this bend. And we'll just use a wheelbarrow to do 30 feet of sidewalk. And then we'll be able to shoot all this right out of the mixer. I got the step ready to go this morning. This is a 16 inch tread to match our border. Step liner around it, rods tied into the foundation of the porch. Um, tomorrow, I'll come down and clean this and seal it, or color it and seal it. Stay with us. Morning, truck's leaning pretty good, so we stopped them right there, just shy of the bend, wheeling it up. Step is done out to here, so it'll start going pretty fast now. Throw me a float. Thank you. 
hard walking on this stone on that hill. Just shaking this, tucking it. Really no tapping here, just giving it a little shake. It's a six foot step. If you do too much on it, you'll see a little bow in it. Okay, just doing some bull floating. Four guys up here is a little bit too crowded. Almost ready to go to shoots. Picking those rods up into the bottom middle. Right on cue. Really nice, not too fast, but it's not laying here. Going around it with an edger. On this particular finish, we try not to leave an inner line. We just roll this edge a little bit. I like that. Last little bit. Jim's got that. I got this. We'll be on cuts in minutes. This is four foot wide, so we do about a five foot long pad. Four by fives. Cutting. I put one at the base of the step. We're going to cut that down through off of the porch so everything runs down and then we're going to Y it off of there. These are about five feet. I line them up square with the walk. Keep in mind this is curved so each one I look straight down at and I picture a framing square right here. That, that's what I want to see. My intersection point at the base of the steps. Jim's putting on the liquid release, nice heavy coat. Not, not so heavy that it runs, just no bare spots. Make sure we get everything. I'm gonna get Ryan on a little wheel down the joint. Minutes of this rolling back and forth, putting that texture in. Now I'm starting to push down on it a little bit out here on this sunny edge, but the shade is still a little bit soft. So no pressure to pressure. Give it a double roll. Take it across. Just different things you can do. Oh man, that phone. Okay, the last little bit is sprayed. Now I take a bag, just like I did over there. Do this first two inches. Try and get you in there to see it. You can see it just scratches it a little bit, gives it some texture. <laughs> Okay, last little bit of wheeling on the step. Changing it up. Down here. We just do all this with the little wheel. Okay, this is what we use on the border. So that's what I wanted to use on the step. It's pretty soft over here. That's what I'm looking for. Let me jump out and do the sun side first. As I slip in the stone. Give it a quarter turn. And repeat. Since it's wheeled, now I don't have to take this all the way down to get full impression. I just want some veining in it. Okay, this is next morning. Looks like some dogs were walking on it. Uh, today, I'm gonna go ahead and give this a good cleaning, scrubbing. and do my saw cutting up here. So right here, in time, you'll see a hairline crack right down the face. So I'm gonna put a cut right across here, down this face, and connect it to this intersection. I'll plunge cut these corners, and we are good to go. I'll get this cleaned up, I'll show you in a minute. So it likes to crack right at these intersection points, even though the, there's an expansion joint there. So I just took my chop saw 
and dove a cut there, 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 and there. It took less than a minute, and that'll save a phone call and an ugly crack coming off of these corners. I'll get the water turned on. We're just washing all the dust off at first. If you don't get that sawdust off of there, the sealer won't stick. And if it does stick, in about a week or so, you'll see a whitey, white cloudish underneath it. You got to get it off of there, and you have to scrub it. So it goes quick. You just have to do it. So I hit all this siding from the dust. Clean everything while we're here. All right, I'll go ahead and wrap this up here. Talk to you soon. Okay, now with it all cleaned, just damp, I'm going to start applying my Permatique. Again, we're using Storm Gray. And I did not bring my mixer. I, I like using my mixer, but I forgot it this morning. So I'll just do a Steven method, put it in the sprayer, shake it up. Just use my shield. I went around the wall sprayed the middle i put it on nice and heavy and then just hit it with a broom and you can just see how it settles right in get through this before the phone rings again uncolored and colored Putting it on heavy on these dog prints. Uh, maybe we'll hide them a little bit. You and I will know they're there, but most people will just overlook them. Okay. Setting that off there. There you go. Let this dry. It is ready for sealer. I just held a cardboard shield up around the house. Now I only have to get within about a foot doing a nice blend and watch it come to life. How about that? That's just looking so good. I wanted to get a little bit more right here in the sun. That's all sealed. And that is no sealer. Watch how it just turns it to life. Pulls out all that color. Now I'm back in the shade. Doesn't that look gorgeous? Too nice to walk on, that's for sure. Okay, one last look at it. All done and sealed. So we just keep the end barricade barricaded for uh, probably an hour and this will be hard enough for those dogs to walk on. I'll show you the footprints up there. They look pretty good now. You know, we know they're there. Barely noticeable though. The sealer and color really help blend some accidents like that. Things happen, right? Okay. As always, thanks for tuning in to Conquer with Hosses. Join us on the next project. <laughs>